Hi, I'm Yanko, and I'm developer, backend developer, senior backend developer, and I'm working in a machine for the last eight years. I'm also a CRM developer and technical lead on several projects, but those roles are not important today. Today, I want to talk about being a backend developer. So let me dress for occasion. Much better. So let me tell you that uh, I absolutely love developing software. This is the most creative uh, thing that you can do. In other branches, people are making something from materials, but we, we are making something from nothing. Okay, not really nothing. There is one ingredient and that is our knowledge. Uh, when I think about the role of a backend developer, I'm thinking of the server side of application. So that side that users don't usually see, but without it, application couldn't work. So if our application would be a body, the front end would be skin, clothes, hair, cool stuff. But the back end would be our bones, muscles, blood, and the most important, the brain. If we would translate this in a software terms, uh, the backend would be a database and exchange data with it. It would be creating an API that communicates with frontend and manipulating data in a way that frontend needs. Then it would be developing a business logic that describes how application functions. And we need to create a communication between different parts of our application so that they can work together in synchrony. Why I personally really like backend development is because this is where the geek part of application is. This is where the math that we thought, why would we ever need this is used. And this is where the complex algorithm come into play. This is where in the morning when you have a really difficult problem, you think you're the most stupid person in the world. And then in the evening, when you actually resolve the problem, you think you're the greatest genius there is. This is where in the meetings, everybody that is not a developer have no idea what you're talking about. And this is where the soul of application is. So how did I became a developer? I was born in Yugoslavia, that state that doesn't exist anymore, which makes me feel like a dinosaur. As a kid, I really liked science books, encyclopedias, and I liked TV shows about science. And there was a really special one. It was Un Discoveries Unlimited. When I would come back to house from my kindergarten, I would be memorized by this uh, show, and I would suck up all information it could provide. Later, when my mother comes back home, I would tell her everything that I learned that day. And one day, it was a very special episode. It was all about programmers and robots. Then I said to my mother, you know what? When I grow up, I will build, build you a robot that would vacuum clean for you. Spoiler alert, I didn't. Those robots already exist and my mom has one. But other children wanted to be doctors, pilots, cowboys, and I wanted to be a programmer. Kids would be confused by it, they didn't know what it is, and I would just explain, and I would click, click the button and machine would do stuff. Once I went to my friend's house, and there were a lot of children there. I thought maybe it's his birthday, but no, it was something much better. His Gastarbeiter uncle just came back from Vienna, and he was bearing gifts. In that time, Yugoslavia, most of us had some relatives living and working in Germany, Switzerland, Austria. And when those people would come back home, they would bring with them treasures unimaginable. Things we didn't know even existed. Things that we could not get in our shops. And that day, my friend got brand new Nintendo Entertainment System. I was blown away by this futuristic uh, technology that would me that uh, would allow me to by pressing a button move that hyper realistic man on the screen you can even see his mustache and if he eats a mushroom he would grow like uh, Alice in the Wonderland 
Then I said to my friend, when I grow up, I will make my own games. Spoiler alert, I did. And I also had a dream that when I grow up, I will be a programmer and I will be living in Vienna. Spoiler alert, I am. <laughs> and then the bad stuff happened. The war came and everything went upside down. People lost a lot and became poor. We needed a decade just to get back on our feet. And we could not afford a computer for me. But we had some really old computers in a school. And there, uh, using Pascal, I created a highly sophisticated program that would make high-pitched noises that human ear could barely hear, but that would annoy the <laughs> of the people. <laughs> Good times. I was already 16 years old when I got my first PC. Again, thanks to the relatives living in Austria. Compared to new generations, I started pretty late. Some people start in their 20s, some in their 30s. Some studied a completely different topic and some didn't went to university at all. And most of them are all awesome developers. So here comes my first advice. It doesn't matter when you start, just that you start. Yes, if you started earlier, you could have been already somewhere. But if you don't start, you will never be there. My first, uh, I started with my first project on my brand new Pentium 2 in a Visual Basic. I created a small program that had one button and if you click on it, it would show a picture and some text. I probably showed, the, showed it to everybody in my family and they were not impressed. But it doesn't matter because that was my first step. And this is my the second advice. Start small and develop step by step with small iterations. Think about the simplest application you can make and then make it. And after that, add one extra thing that will make it better. And then another one and then another. I was really proud when I went to university to study informatics. There, we saw so many problematics that programming and computers can solve, and we touched most of them. I also saw that some things that I thought are very complicated are quite easy, like that snake game, or things that are really easy are actually quite complicated, like moving that button a little bit on the left. But university is just the basics. You will learn the most at your first job in a field that you find the best. But you could learn everything by yourself. You can try everything by yourself. But it is much harder, especially because of the third thing that I found really important in university, and that is, I can't believe I'm going to say it, but it's the math. All those maths that we were breaking our heads with and we talk, think, were thinking we're never going to use it, it's really important. First, some of it we are really going to use in our code, but even that part that we are never going to use has a very important purpose, and that is to sharpen your most uh, valuable skill that you will have as a developer, and that is logical thinking. Logical thinking will be your most valuable skill when you finish your university. Yes, basics of coding, program languages, everybody with diploma will have those. When I went to in job interview at Emakina, team lead read my CV, he saw technologies that I had experiences with, and then he started having conversa conversation with me about technologies that I never had worked with. I was really confused by it, and I thought I'm not the man they need, and that I will not get the job. And I was really surprised when they called me later and offered me a position as a backend developer. And Makina didn't care if I knew some technologies or not. They were caring only if I am thinking good 
and if I'm able to learn technologies that they will need for the future. So this is thanks to a machina that my childhood dream of being the programmer in Vienna finally came true. But being a backend developer is just the beginning. There is so many options for the future. As you work, you will gather more knowledge and more skills like communication and teamwork and knowing what client really wants and even that he, that he doesn't know he really, really wants and tell them what he wants, what he really, really wants. With all that knowledge, why not be a consultant or a technical lead or a project? Why not become a team lead or lead of whole uh, development apartment? Why not start up your own startup company someday? But whatever you want for the future, you need to start with that small important step. And that's where we at the Machina come into play. Come to the interview and bring your knowledge with you because that's the only thing you will ever going to need. Thank you. See ya.